Ah. 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 Oh, wow, that feels a lot better. AI bros are not gonna take over the media world. I'm positive. We all saw Sora last weekend, right? OpenAI announces this massive new tool that can just generate wildly convincing videos at the drop of a text prompt. Sam Altman, the CEO, gets on Twitter and starts generating people's suggestions. There's so many really good examples of this thing working and working really well, and it's crazy. It seems like AI can generate any video prompt and create results that are at least 90% convincing, with next year's version probably being completely undetectable as AI. Game over. No more rendering. No more cinematography. The age of prompts is upon us. And highly vocal AI adopters on Twitter are the new kings of media, right? Wrong. And the reason why is taste. You see, being an artist isn't just about being able to make nice looking brushstrokes or set up convincing shots. It's also about taste. Taste is about preferences. Why do we think Lord of the Rings is peak cinema and the room is just a mindless jaunt through a world of campiness? What makes a performance great? What makes a painting valuable? The answer is that it's humans that give it value. The humans with specific tastes. Some people have good taste. Some people have bad taste. Some bad taste is enjoyable. Some taste is boring. Some taste is pretentious, but all of it gets filtered heavily through to some sort of commonly accepted standard of what's good taste before it makes its way into the media and into broadly acceptable, appealing places where people consume that media. Here's my main freaking point. I haven't seen a single video or image generated by an AI bro on Twitter that would get approved by an art director. Not because of the quality of rendering, but because the aesthetic of what's being generated. A lot of these mid-journey bros are out here on Twitter publishing what looks at best like a stock photo. That's the best case scenario. The Sora Blingzu weirdly goes hard though? I can't explain that one. Also, for those of you who are confused about this video, I'm Woody. I'm a real human and I wrote this video. This is a virtual experience I designed and programmed in Unreal Engine 5. I'm a real guy, I made this. I actually just upgraded the look of this visual experience. And if I sound any different, it's because we got a new studio in real life and we're working out the kinks. Video on that soon. Now I have a few caveats. AI is probably going to be used a lot in the next era. You know, despite the blatant theft of everyone's intellectual property for the training of these models being a morally bankrupt phenomenon, there are tons of people that have great taste but don't directly make art. They're collectors, producers, curators, and all kinds of other roles, and we need those people. There are also people using AI that have good taste. I'm thinking about the work Paul Trillo has done using Runway. Also, America is addicted to technology hype and it wouldn't be the first time we dropped a few aesthetic considerations in favor of platforming new tech. Remember when we had to look at these ugly shits all the time and companies got on board too? But it's not the AI bros that are hitting it big and making the next Hollywood blockbuster. It's people that are already traditionally speaking talented that are using the tools selectively. Which brings me to the other reason AI bros are never gonna hit the big time. Not anytime soon. They have no f connections. Uh, I bet you thought I forgot about the cannon, didn't you? See, in a previous video, I told you all that if you left a comment, I would fire them at myself out of a cannon. Let's see that again in slow motion. Leave me a comment about how you feel about AI generated video and next time we do this, I'll, I'll take a bath in them. How about that? <laughs> a lot of the AI debate gets centered on this weird term of democratizing media and film. Ignore the fact for a minute that cinema grade cameras are cheap, production is possible at a historically unprecedented speed and publishing is free and global. Let's say for a second it's true. Let's say AI will make everyone a great filmmaker. We're not gonna see movies coming out of the eager beaver AI evangelist Twitter set, guys, b because they need to have the connections. When I talk about a movie, I'm talking about something that a studio makes and you see in theaters. You see, when a brand wants to make an ad or a film studio wants to make a movie, they have people they call. The brand talks to their agency, which writes the ad and hires a production company to film it or to animate it and then edit it. The studio brings on a producer, which finds a director and starts the process of assembling a team and enlisting other production companies to help out. These are all based on relationships. Those people who get the call might choose to use AI when necessary, but they're not the AI bros I'm talking about. They're agencies and creative directors and filmmakers who also have access to AI. It's people, 
people who know each other and trust each other to get the job done. You could have the best work in your portfolio, AI or not, and it still wouldn't happen for you. It's not simply because someone is capable. You could have an incredible taste and you'd still be at a loss without a working relationship with people who make this stuff happen. My friend Amanda Russell is one of the founders of Cream Studio. They're an animation and motion graphics studio in Virginia. I run a live podcast and I asked her about this last year. I feel like a lot of the people who are making like AI art, like AI artists, like a lot of those people like are not artists for a reason. Artists are going to stay in charge, but like the whole process will truncate. Is that, do you, do you, what do you yes. think about that? And I think that it will certainly open up the opportunity for more novices to kind of get in. Look at how motion design started. You know, you had editors, you had you had graphic designers that found motion design or you know motion graphics, whatever you want, and and we fell in love with it that way. And then we learned it from there, and that's okay too. Wait a minute, did this otherwise very gatekeepery video just take a slightly more open tone? Yeah, I guess it did. Some of y'all who are into this AI thing might succeed. Maybe you'll join on at a studio that can use your skills in order to help make the work happen with new workflows and things. As Amanda said, this may be a really good time for you to join the industry, which means you're gonna share in all of the problems of traditional creative spaces, to which I must say, best of luck and welcome in. At the end of the day, I don't hate AI or AI users, although they probably haven't watched this far into the video. I hate mass theft, the idea of something from nothing, and listening to people who vocally and rudely champion the end of artists. I want to participate in the future of AI, but I want to do it graciously and ethically. If you're interested in this advancing conversation about AI and creative spaces, I'm starting another channel. Call it an experiment, if you will. No fancy production quality, just some humble thoughts as things continue to change. This channel is about game development and using Unreal Engine for advanced animation and live production. So I'm making another space where I can scream into the void about this new AI world and how uncomfortable it makes me.